Hello and welcome everybody to Halo RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and this is the just under 7,300 pound Wildwood 29 V-Bud. This is an incredibly cool, crafty, and flexible floor plan that frankly can almost do just about a little bit of anything short of sliced dice and julienne uh, potatoes. But you know, that's why we get those 1980s like presto salad shooter kind of contraptions in our kitchen. Regardless, for whatever reason, I don't know what it was, the, the uh, designers at Wildwood must have really had a special liking to this floor plan. It got more little tweaks, love, and attention than any Wildwood floor plan I have seen to date coming from the 21 to the 22 season. Uh, of course it has the Versa lounge. Just this also has the Versa bunk. This rear room could do anything. It could function as an amazing uh, private rear bunk room. It could be an extended living room. It could be a craft room. It is begging for an office conversion. It could be a, uh, a traveling bicycle garage if, if you don't want a toy hauler but you want a space to put some of the kids stuff. I mean like I said, it, it could do so, so much, and it does it all really, really well is the thing without requiring a lot of changes. The If you're doing mobile learning with your kids, the rear, the, the private room in this, it could be a classroom because they, they put chalkboards on the bottom side of the bunks. There's uh, a dry erase uh, capable baggage door on the front side of this thing here. It has an enclosed heated underbelly and it is incredibly sturdy and stable. When those little kids get all jacked up on marshmallow and Mountain Dews, brother, you've got the stable steps. You've got the four corner uh, um, strong arm stabilizers. It's now roof solar ready. Like I said, they're just, they're just ain't much. It doesn't do really, really well. Uh, if you've never seen this one before, definitely stay tuned. You're going to like it. As we go, um, leave me a couple of notes. Let me know what you like, what you change. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We'd love to have you around on the next one too. But in the meantime, let's get inside this thing because it's a beast. And the trick I always have with this one is there's, there's so much to cover, I never really know where to begin. So just to give you your bearings, where we're standing is like in the hallway as you go to the bedroom and bathroom, which is one of the more interesting aspects of this floor plan. It has a forward bathroom with a shower instead of a rear bathroom with a tub. That might be a uh, important factor for somebody. Let's hit that. How about the fact that uh, you can stand up in that shower if you're tall like me because we have a six foot nine ceiling. And on a bigger floor plan like this, we typically will outfit this with a larger 15,000 BTU air conditioner because there's a lot of cubic foot of space in here. Like. It's a one slide RV, so there's a lot of times you're like, eh, one slide, I don't need, know that you need to go like multi air conditioner, big AC. Eh, this one kind of feels like maybe you do. Now notice, you've got the nice uh, blackout kind of uh, roller shades going on over here. And I wanna give you a look at this thing. This is really something Wildwood has, has taken off with and standardized wherever they could, the Versa Lounge. It's what I call a Swiss Army Super Sofa. It only does everything. The secret is that piece right there. It flip-flops into different configurations to do, uh, you know, some, uh, some, some different things. So, as you see here, if you want to, you can convert it into just a traditional U dinette and sofa. It doesn't have to be the funky lounge thing, but... It can also flip down into just one big giant mega sleeper, which name another trailer that can do that. And then you see how we have all of these storage totes down below here. And the rear bench of that u dinette is wide open. This is just monster seating, monster sleeping, monster storage. Just monstrously good. I mean, it, it just it just does all of the things, basically. <laughs> and by the way, that's not daylight coming in through the slide. Instead of the bug zapper, labat, blue light, laser beam lighting that they, a lot of brands have up there, that is just a simple accent uh, white light. You can turn it off and on if you want to, you know, little things like that. I like it in lounge mode. Um, and one of the reasons is like, I'm a big, tall, long guy. I could lay on that. I could stretch out. I could sleep. I could take a nap. I could stuff myself up in that corner and watch TV. And what I think is cool is you don't like lose a dinette. In a way, you almost sort of gain a deskish kind of thing. And by the way, those totes that we saw are food safe. So you put uh, non-perishable stuff in there or, you know, like boxes of crackers, whatever. And um, it, it's 20.3 of stow and go uh, tote storage. 20.3 uh, cubic foot. I'm sorry, that's a lot. That is a lot of cubic feet of storage. All of the countertops in this, by the way, are a sealed edge pressed membrane 
we'll come back to the kitchen. I, I think I want to get back into this Versa room. Um, and one of the major updates that they put in here, if you remember this one previously, uh, they they shifted things around and they gave it a true pocket door in that wall right here. Like, hold on, let me just take a seat on the sofa. So when you're sitting on the sofa, you see how that makes everything back there look so big and, and wide open? The tall ceiling is great here. And uh, I, I've, I, I've told you all a bunch of things I like. Let me point out something here that, uh, you know, we should we should consider. That's pretty much our only door side window that we can see from the living room. Just enough in the kitchen uh, that you could decide you need to fly out the door, which does not have a window. It would be my preference that it did. So um, always try to point out little, you know, points of consideration. Now, the entertainment, because there's not a TV standard from the factory, it's kind of easy to overlook it. But like when you're sitting on the sofa, you're right up in its face. Um, I've been calling this the Tootsie Toaster. One of my other awesome viewers called it the Footsie Fryer, which can we get uh, can we get a vote down in the comment section? I'm of the belief that Footsie Fryer is greater than Tootsie Toaster myself. That's just that's just funny. <laughs> and Wildwood sometimes gets knocked as not being like they're not fancy, they're not flashy, but they're smart. Like a digital thermostat that you you know just it's amazing how many really high end brands don't do that. Now back here, this rear room can be anything. Up top there, we're going to work our way all the way around here. We have uh, the uh, TV hookups there. And then this is a new for 22 thing. Remember I said this could have like a classroom function? Those on the bottom of the flip-up bunks in Wildwoods now are chalkboards, which I think is very, very cool. And again, keeping the kids occupied on a, uh, uh, a rainy type day is very, very cool. Then down here, you, you notice this flips open. It's nice and big. You've got like a sofa bench kind of place right there straight across from the entertainment center. You've got storage down below here for extra duffel bags and whatnot. Actually, I mentioned uh, across from the, the bunker room entertainment. Let me slide in here. I don't know that I've ever really demonstrated this before. When you're sitting in the bunk room, right above that cargo door, there's your TV hookups. I tell you what, um... My parents would never let me bring like a Game Boy or something when we were camping because I was definitely one of those kids. If you put an electronic device in my hand, I I, I tuned out to everything else. I kind of am still that way with a camera in my hand to this day. But um, you took the, the thing out of my hand and I'd go out and, you know, get dirty, get muddy, play games with the kids. But wait till you see what else this does. But then we fold everything open. And what you see here is this is not just a bunk, it's a second bedroom. That's a 60 by 74 Camp Queen. Uh, that is uh, a, a lot bigger than just a conventional bunk, which we suddenly magically have two of. And notice how they have their own breeze windows. That's another thing that's really cool. Um, you know, in, I, I, I suppose, classroom mode, whatever you want to call it with the chalkboards or playroom mode, you've got function there. But when you fold these down, you've got airflow and, and function as well something else that's really cool about this one like if you've got a big kid or two this is really functional or if you have adult friends that might join every now and then you can definitely sleep a big adult down there if they have to they can sleep corner to corner but they can make it work and then across the rear here like you have an l-shaped bunk I, it's sort of like an alternative to a quad bunk house i guess but you could also look at this as saying well when we do that there's like an eight foot long bed up here just a big, long, giant, tall bunk, basically. Um, uh, well, a bunk good for tall people. I think you get the idea. It's, I mean, it's a bunk room. It's a playroom. It's a guest room. It's a craft room. It's, you know, dog kennel space. It... Offices. Uh, <laughs> it only does everything. Swiss Army bunk room, basically. And I didn't overtly state it. Uh, well, I mean, I, I actually, I did overtly state it. It has a true pocket door now, but I didn't display it. That's what I meant to say. There we go. Words are hard. The pantry on this is, uh, as Stanley would say, too legit to quit, uh, which maybe you weren't aware was the actual name of one Mr. M.C. Hammer. His name is Stanley, by the way. Um, don't know anything else about them, really. <laughs> I don't know why I know that bit of trivia. Now, do you see this? Forget the lazy Susan. This is active Susie. That is actually what they call this uh, design. <laughs>
But do not fear, Fraulein, for they have also included a great space for the wastebasket, yeah? <laughs> and then over here, Wildwood. Uh, if you like these 12-volt compressor fridges, they were the first mainstream manufacturer to standardize those in this class. And really, when a lot of people found out, wait a minute, a stick and tin trailer has a bigger, faster cooling fridge? Uh, why doesn't this fancy, expensive laminated trailer handle it, uh, or have that? It really forced the hand of a lot of big brands. Good counter space right there. Notice how with the taller ceiling, they throw, well, actually Wildwood always throws a shelf in that overhead cabinet, uh, just to really maximize the storage. Now, back to the question of the uh, entertainment. I'm currently in like the booth desk section. The lounge is right in front of us. So if you are sitting in the lounge, if I slide the camera forward, this is kind of your view right here, you know? Not too bad. Uh, if you choose to add a TV, I don't even know that you really got to get a fancy swing arm mount for it, which is something I suggest on a lot of Wildwoods. Oh, uh, another little new for 22 update below the Tootsie Toaster, Footsie Fryer, whatever you want to call it. Just a little light for the shoe garage. But you know what else I thought about that? That is kind of a neat little get your bearings point for walking through the hallway here and getting up to this forward bathroom, which has enjoyed some very nice little cosmetic aesthetic facelift touches. Um, whoa, 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 there we go. Yeah, I got the camera shoved in the door jam like a d dummy. I, I don't know. I was going to try to find something and I, I, I couldn't. But I, I was looking at this and like under the sink, you see the cool little slatted design right there. Great space for like extra uh, toilet paper. Tons of room around this toilet, brother. Uh, that's a that's a big old take your time kind of toilet right there. You could set up shop and, you know, play around on your phone, Googling whatever you're going to do today on that thing. But the little slats, the uh, the accent wall paneling uh, behind that uh, mirrored medicine cabinet, this, the clear shower door, these are all things that they've borrowed uh, from the, like, Wildwood Lodge and Grand Lodge destination trailers. They're giving us, you know, big features, big function here. And with that taller ceiling, I can stand in that thing all day be comfortable well i guess all day would be kind of boring my legs would probably get tired but you get the idea it's not it's it's comfortable for for taking a shower um it does have the uh more conventional four inch fart fan variety kind of thing right here but if what you're looking for is to upgrade the uh the fan that's that's not a hard thing to do uh at all we can take care of that for you now the bedroom of these wildwood has always had a 60 by 74 camp queen that's exactly what this has but when they went to this very bulbous bubble nose design, it sucked the mattress forward. I would personally prefer it if, since there's room for a true queen, if they just put the true queen in it. That would be my preference, but they don't, but you can. Um, you know what? I'm trying to figure out how I want to go about showing you the storage here. If I very slowly bring you in here, and by the way, look at the top of that uh, viewing breeze through window. There's another one of those blackout shades there. If I twist you around uh, ever so slowly here, straight across the bed, naturally you see uh, TV hookups. I very rarely see somebody actually utilize those, but hey, they're there. But then you see there's like the little light on uh, in there. Open that sucker up and you see that this has like a floor to ceiling kind of dresser space, along with a laundry hamper that's new for 22 and more like individual totes under the bed there. Back to those in just a second. First though, uh, the CPAP storage cabinets that they're using on these are awesome. And it doesn't have to be just for CPAPs, obviously. But you see the uh, the USB plugs for phone charging out here, but the household outlets inside it with the handy little cutaway uh, alcove. There's a couple things I think are really smart about this. Because it's a full-length hanging closet, there's no sharp points to, you know, jab me in the shoulder when I roll over. I am so capable of doing that. You wouldn't even understand. I'm such a klutz. Um, the, uh, the other thing here is if you're kind of claustrophobic, you sort of have like a negative space window directly in your face. Now I was talking about the, all these storage totes. So if we're all being honest, what is our favorite thing about owning an RV? Packing all the stuff up, right? No, of course not. It sucks. That's the work part before the vacation. Then you got to unpack everything. You can kind of use these totes in a way that makes life easier, uh, especially when it comes to the kids stuff. There's so many different little totes and boxes under the master bed, and there's five of these under here and all kinds of stuff. What you can kind of do um, is, like, let's say you have two or three kids, because you can sleep two or three kids back there. 
Put labels on the front of these. Like each one of these belongs to a different kid. When you're packing up their clothes for your trip, you put all of each kid's clothes on their bed and then you hand them each their tote and you say, go up to your bedroom, put all of the clothes on your bed in that tote and then bring it back to mom and dad. And it's the little things. It, well, one, it helps teach them responsibility. It helps teach them process. It helps teach them to get involved in, and to help with things. I always, I, I thought it was so cool that I got to help dad set up the trailer. I would crank the tongue jack until it hit the ground and then it got too heavy. Um, I've always had these spaghetti noodle arms, by the way. I, I don't, uh, I, I don't expect I'll ever look like, um, you know, a, a Marvel superhero busting out the 28 inch pythons, brother. Um, Obviously, Hulk Hogan, not a superhero from the Marvel Universe, but you get the idea. You get this, right? Like, you could use them for food, clothes, get the kids involved. I think I just think it's, sometimes it's just the littlest things that improve your daily life in a camper, you know? That's the stuff I look for. But I tell you, one area where this RV really improved from last year is the travel access. Because last year, uh, you could kind of snake around the sofa and the countertop and, and and kind of do a step over the dinette seat like I just did right there. But this wasn't as big and wide. And you have to do a suck in the gut butt scoop boogie uh, to slide back through here. But the fact remains, like I just did even with my dad bod, you can slide back in here now. That was something you just couldn't do before. Now, you had the deadbolting cargo door over here, but I don't think that's how people want to have to get in and out of the bunkhouse. They don't want to have to go out, go around, climb in, you know, bop it, twist it, flick it. <laughs> so the question then becomes, yeah, what about the bedroom and bathroom? And by default, no, no, you, you can't get to that. But uh, I've got a, uh, a little trick here to show you. And uh, I've got some crazy light reflecting off the countertop under me. I look like I'm getting ready to tell a scary camping ghost story, brother. But that's not what I'm getting at right here. Actually, I've got good news. Because this uses a full rack and pinion slide, that means that if you need to, kind of like I'm doing right now, you can actually just crack the slide a little bit and give yourself enough room to squeeze up there into that bedroom bathroom space. And then if you do that, just like we did here, we've only got it kind of partially open. You can slide your way right up. You can get to the bedroom, the bathroom as needed. But a quick little caveat here for you on that, a little uh, caution. You don't want to like leave it like this. Like if you're going to make an overnight stay and you slide up into the, uh, the bedroom space here, uh, you kind of shouldn't because this slide should be closed as quickly as possible. And it shouldn't be like occupied and used when only partially open. You should also probably never do something like this in the rain because these slides are not like fully sealed when they're only partially open or partially closed. Just a little handy tip for you, but also, you know, make sure you don't wreck your camper accidentally. So first I'd like to draw your attention over here to that super slide. You see that slide side breeze window. Notice how it's all whited out. Uh, those uh, blackout roller shades, uh, those things have a white backer. Uh, the idea there being to reflect sunlight rather than absorb it to help, you know, prevent a little bit of a greenhouse effect. Now that battery disconnect right there, that's something that the RV industry was, I think, a little late to adopt uh, more widespread. I'm glad it's here, better late than never. Especially now that, um, you know, you've got so much tech on campers nowadays. We've got, you know, stereos and circuit panels and all this stuff that uh, just slowly drains on the battery because it doesn't turn off. It goes into standby mode. It's kind of like my mouth. It doesn't turn off. We got, uh, who do we got back here? We got John and Mike doing uh, uh, karaoke with one another with their hands. Shadow puppet theater, whatever. Um, <laughs> they're on camera. They figured it out. Um, the, uh, uh, oh, little new for 22 update. Sometimes it's just the tiny little things. Maybe just another way to help keep the kid occupied a little bit while you're cooking or something, but little dry erase board right here. Or if you're playing like uh, yard games, you're playing, uh, you know, a little bag toss or ring toss or something like that. A little maybe scorekeeper board, something like that. It is maybe a little bit high for the littles to try to reach, obviously. But down here under that bed, large front compartment here, backside of that laundry hamper that we're looking at. I, I do want to be fair, note that they do a smaller height, but same width baggage door on the opposite side, but at least it is a true pass-through. And then we got all this over here. Sometimes, again, it doesn't come here, have to be 
fancy. It just has to be effective. The, as we like to call it, cordless jack system. The little drill bit adapter right there, so you can just hook that thing right up to your little power drill and pretend you're Tim the Toolman Taylor and boop, boop, like, you know, NASCAR pit crew, that sucker. Um, that is a, uh, just a nice handy little thing that they include with these. Now, it's funny because that's not a small awning. That's, that's a pretty good size awning. It's just, you gotta remember, this is a 36 foot tip to tail camper. The model number is 29, tongue to bumper, tip to tail, it's 36 feet and some inches. Because of that, you hear 7,300 pounds. Uh, some people are gonna say, oh, my half ton can tow more than that, okay. But this is a long trailer. Because of that, I get weird about half ton towing this one. I don't generally recommend it. Maybe some very specific heavy, heavy duty half tons, but not my general everyday preference. This is an anti-slam door right here, which requires the Miss Piggy Hi -ya! little karate chop. With karate, I'll close the door from here to right over there. Anybody who knows that musical reference, leave me a little note in the comments section. That's not just me being weird. Anyway, I, I, I did tweak the lyrics a little bit to make them a little more business friendly. <laughs> Remember, I talked about the stability of this. We've got the Moride stable steps that are easy adjust there. We'll come back to the stability aspect in just a second. But first, under the um, oh, uh, kitchen counter, in the corner of the peninsula, it's kind of hard to reach from the inside, they give us an outdoor option here. Now, this refrigerator is not 12 volt. I wish it was. It's not. It's 110 only. Um, hopefully in the future, it's not just Wildwood, by the way. It's like the whole RV industry for the most part does that. I would really like to see that changed in time. But down below, handy little griddle station. It's just a perfect little place. Like, right, you know what? My wife would crush with this thing because every now and then when she's cooking, just drizzle a little bit of beer on the meat there and, and everything works out just fine. Plus, acting sort of like uh, an outside um, wash basin. My voice going, hi, right there. <laughs> Don't know why it does that. I guess I'm still going through puberty, whatever. Um, <laughs> you get the idea. You got a little place that you can, you can hose the kids off, you know, on a hot summer day like this. I love the fact that these speakers are, are right down low here, so you don't have to blow the neighbors away with your freedom rock, brother. Although if they don't like it, obviously they have bad taste in music, but I try to be a good neighbor. I park camp a lot. Now back to the stability. All four corner jacks on this have those strong arm stabilizer bars right there. See the little T-handle? Even just hand tightening that thing, it's absolutely incredible. Between those corner jacks and those steps, as people, especially the kids, all day, it is amazing how somebody who weighs a fraction of what I weigh can shake, rattle, and roll a trailer around like crazy. Now, the roof is fully walkable. You notice a lack of a ladder. Wildwood has never really offered ladders on these. However, they are one of the brands that are still including ladder backers. So that is ladder capable. If that's something you're interested in, uh, our team can you know, run the VIN number past Wildwood. We can get a rear wall schematic, and we can get you all laddered up, baby. Uh, because one of the things that we can't see as a result of that is these now have standard roof solar prep, and they have uh, a simple but you know better than nothing uh, like uh, off-grid extension kind of package. Now, some people might ask, if solar is available as a 12-volt fridge, why didn't you pair them up? And my answer to that is because different areas of the country camp very differently. Here in the Midwest, which is our primary consumer, even though we are very much a nationwide dealer, uh, we have customers who, um, you know, mostly park camp. And there's certainly a, a growing number of boondocking kind of people, but we have some other trailers here that are very well suited for that. Um, so it's available. We can always add it. We, all, we just don't force every single customer into it every time. That's why we have so many different offerings here. Now that door right there, I talk about it every time because I, I just think it's cool. That was actually my idea. I hope you like it. It's got a deadbolt for security, by the way. Um, but uh, it, it turns the bunk room when you're traveling like into a bicycle or cargo garage or something like that, which I, I don't know. I think that's very cool. Um, and I knew I'd do this. I knew I'd forget to get down there while I was up close to it. The enclosed heated accessibility. These are people who are after my own heart with their made up fun words. Accessible and belly, the accessibility. Notice how it's not just a common, like what corrugated material, like what looks like plastic cardboard, basically. Those are um, sectionalized panels. God forbid you need some kind of service work done on this thing. 
Those panels can be dropped individually. You don't have to drop the whole belly, which saves you labor time. And when they go back up, what you're not left with is like a shop razor cut in your corrugated belly with duct tape holding it up to form an access panel, which is, frankly, sometimes one of the only ways you can cost effectively work on an enclosed underbelly of a travel trailer. Dropping an entire enclosed underbelly, putting it back up, is actually very labor intensive and costs a lot more on a repair bill. Nobody likes that. So thank you very much for hanging out with us, folks. Leave me a couple comments. Again, let me know what you like about or what you would want change or any questions you might have. I leave you a link in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability. And, and, and join the little discussion here. What would you do with this rear room? I think that most people are gonna use it as a bunkhouse, but what alternative use would you put it through? Love to hear from you. And when you're ready, we're ready here at Haylet RV. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Haylet camping, everyone. Thank <music> you.